This video teaches you how to calculate the implied volatility surface of Python code. I'll teach you how to do it with the keyboard. Subscribe, hit the like button, buy my books. Links in the description below. Let's get into the video. Let's open Google Chrome, press Windows key 9 or Alt E is an echo, B is in Bravo, and key to get over to Google Chrome. Tab over to get to implied volatility surface. The first thing I'm going to do is install and import the necessary libraries to run this code. Let's see if that works. So I've got pip install, why, why is in Yankee Finance that'll install Yahoo Finance. Import NumPy is N is in November, P is in Papa. Import the pandas data frame as P is in Papa, D is in Delta. Import Y Finance. Import date time as D is in Delta, T is in Tango. Import matplotlib decimal pi plot as P is in Papa, L is in Lima, T is in Tango. And you can see I've already done that. So this requirement's already satisfied on my computer. Next, I'm going to create a function that allows Python to get all option expirations. And then it's going to loop through each expiration so that we have the options chain of available options at various expirations. And then also this allows Python to compute the days till expiration for each option. So I'm going to define option underscore change or chains with the argument ticker. Then I'm going to have three quotation marks each in the next two rows. I'll create another variable called asset and set that equal to Y is in Yankee, F is in Foxtrot, decimal ticker with the same argument ticker. I'll create an, a function for expirations and set that equal to asset decimal options. I'll create a function called chains and set that equal to P is in Papa, D is in Delta, decimal data frame with an empty tuple, no arguments in that tuple. And then I want a tuple of two data frames. So for expiration in expirations, I'll create a bunch of different variables opt which equals asset decimal option underscore chain with the argument expiration and then i'll create arguments for both call and put options so set calls equal to opt decimal calls where the option type for calls is call and same for puts create a variable called puts set that equal to opt decimal puts and the Put option type is just going to be put. Then I'm going to concatenate the chain. Chain equals P is in Papa, D is in Delta, decimal concat. And the argument is going to be a list with two arguments in it, calls and puts. Chain as a function of expiration is going to be equal to P is in Papa, D is in Delta, dot, two underscore date time with the argument expiration plus P's and Papa, D's and Delta decimal date offset. And the offset is going to be just under one day. So it's going to be 23 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Then I'm going to concatenate the chains and chain arguments, which are also within a list. Then I have chains as a function of days to expiration equals chains dot expiration minus D's and delta T's and tango decimal date time decimal today plus delta tango decimal days plus one. And finally return chains. Control enter and that seems to be working. Next I'm going to create 
more code that's going to allow for the downloading of data from a pandas data frame for call options on any ticker I want. I've chosen V as in Victor, O as in Oscar, O as in Oscar, which is Vanguard's standard and poor's 500 market cap weighted ETF. So it's just the 500 largest public companies in the US and the ETFs weighted by market capitalization. And you're gonna see here for some reason the Google Co-Laboratory doesn't show the data for this graph, but I'm still going to show you the code so that you can run it in your own integrated development environment, whether that be Google Co-Laboratory or the Jupyter Notebook or some other third notebook. So the options variable is going to be equal to option underscore chains with the argument being the ticker symbol in quotes. I want Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF. So I'll do V as a Miss Victor, O as an Oscar, O as an Oscar. And I'll set calls equal to options with the list options, which has another list option type and set that equal to call with two equal signs. And then I'm gonna set the expirations by just simply typing set with the argument calls decimal expiration. And I'm gonna select an expiration to plot. I'll plot the expiration on February 3rd, 2023 at 2359 minutes and 59 seconds. And then I wanna filter out low volatilities. So I can do that by creating a variable called filtered calls at expiry. Set that equal to calls at expiry with the argument calls at expiry dot implied volatility has to be greater than zero. Uh, for Python, I've got it to zero decimal zero zero one. So that's, that's reasonably close to zero. And then I'm going to have the filtered uh, calls at expiry and that's going to set the the strike price as the index itself so that pandas could plot nicely if it was showing. I'll press control enter. And you can see what I'm talking about. It For Google Collaboratory, it's not plotting this data, but you can see there's the check mark next to 29, so we know it's working. So now I want to plot the implied volatility uh, term structure. And first I got to set an expiration of plot. So I'll create a variable calls at strike equals options with the list options, which has strike as an argument within another list. And I'll set that strike price equal to $400. Again, I want to filter out the low volatilities. So I have that same formula as before. And then I'll set the strike so that pandas plots nicely. And I'll have the title figure size and so forth. Control enter to run that. And you can see the data is messy because Yahoo Finance doesn't, doesn't have all the data one would like for a smooth options chain. And so implied volatility spikes around the expirations for these different options and then goes back down, not quite to zero, but it goes down significantly. This could imply that there's more call buying and selling around the expiration dates. Finally, I want to plot the implied volatility surface. And so first I want to pivot the data frame. So I'll set a variable called surface equal to calls with three arguments in a list, days to expiration, the strike price, of course, and the implied volatility. Those are gonna be the three axis, axes in the uh, implied volatility surface graph. I'll set that equal to pivot underscore table with the values of implied volatility, the index being strike, 
and set columns equal to days to expiration. I'll drop the data points where it's not applicable, so I'll have drop NA. And then I want to create the, the figure itself, so I'll create a, a variable called fig and set it equal to P's and Papa, L's and Lima, T's and Tango, decimal figure. Fig size, I'm going to set that to 10 by 8. And I want to plot this in three dimensions. So to do that, I need the subplot to be within the projection argument. I can do that by setting a variable called A as an alpha, X as an X-ray equal to fig decimal add plot with the argument add underscore subplot rather with the arguments 111 and a 3D projection. Now getting the one dimensional values into the three dimensional pivot, pivoted data frame, I'll create another variable X is an X-ray, Y is in Yankee, Z is in Zulu equals surface decimal columns, decimal values, the surface index values and surface values. And I will return the coordinates having capital X as an X-ray, capital Y as in Yankee, equals N as in November, P as in Papa, dot mesh grid. And then I'll set the labels finally. And I will plot this, control enter to run it. And you can see here, this is the implied volatility surface graph. So all else equal, implied volatility gets higher for longer dated options. And then for the VOO ETF, I think it trades in maybe the 370s or 380s at the time this video is made. So you can see, particularly for shorter dated options that are close to expiration, if they're way in the money or way out of the money, um, there's a spike in implied volatility. So this is how you plot the implied volatility surface uh, in Python using Yahoo Finance data. I'm doing it in Google Colabore Tour Notebook. Take this knowledge into the marketplace to be a better investor, better coder, and better understand how to plot the implied volatility surface. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, leave a comment below, and please buy my books. The links to those will be in the description of this video.